So we are here with Brian Ross of Blitzkrieg and Satan. <laughs> and right now we'll talk about Satan. So when did Satan first form? Oh, um, oh yeah. <laughs> you know, you're, you're really going to have to ask Steve that. <laughs> so I, wasn't, name? I wasn't around in the uh, in the very earliest of the days. Steve? Uh, 1979. Okay. Now, uh, the name Satan. How did that happen? I mean, very controversial back then and still probably controversial. It seemed like a great idea at the time. Uh, <laughs> you were messing with a lot of people before, <laughs> before I had even had a guitar, I'd, uh, I'd drawn the design, mm -hmm. the symmetrical design. And we just thought it was sounded like a cool name for a metal band. And then didn't realize that it was going to get us into a lot of trouble. And, and did it? <laughs> yeah, yeah. We, uh, we remember doing some shows in uh, Germany where Christians turned up outside the show trying to stop the fans coming to see us, to see Satan, which, uh, and then we had to try and explain to them that uh, the band has nothing to do with uh, black metal and stuff like that, you know, we, we, we don't have anything to do with the occult, it's um, basically about injustice and stuff with the lyrics. Now, 30 some years later, are you still facing the same challenges? Uh, no, I think now there's a lot more extreme things and extreme bands, that it just seems like uh, everyone just takes it as a heavy metal name, basically. Okay. Well, let's get into the first uh, recordings that you guys did, uh, which would be... Caught in the Act. Yes. It's, um, Caught in the Act, you know, um, was, was Satan's <coughs> first full-length album, but it was also my personal, uh, personally my first album, mm -hmm. so it means an awful lot to me, it's very special to me, Caught in the Act. Um, and, you know, that we, uh, where to, where to start? What exactly to say? I mean, there are so many memories from that time. Um, you know, just simple things like actually the problems that we had recording the album, uh, which were numerous. Um, it wasn't the best studio in the world. Um, and uh, we had a lot of problems recording it. Um, it wasn't ideal. Um, Sean was in a drum booth, which wasn't even connected to the rest of us, so we were talking to him. Uh, through headphones and microphones, um, you know, and we had to, he had, either had to count us in, or we had to count him in. It was it was it was a very difficult album to record from that angle, um, and uh, I mean even on even mixing it down, um, I re what, you know I've got a, a vivid memory of Graham uh, sitting there with the two-inch reel-to-reel master tape. It was the the, the machine was was uh, erratic at best. And he had to uh, maintain the speed by putting his finger on the top of the reel and keeping it so it went at a constant speed. You shouldn't have to deal with things like that. No. But all of the things that, you know, came together, the songs, uh, I think the camaraderie that was created because of the problems, um, all went together to make what would become a classic album. Mm -hmm. Now that's not for me to say, that's other people that have said it as a classic album. For me, it's it's a, a groundbreaking album in that it was my first album. It will always be special to me for that reason alone. What's up, guys? Um, that barbecue bacon burger or something? But, you know, um, Caught in the Act is what it is. It's It was our first our first album, and uh, it was the first time that we kind of used the judge on the on the cover, which has become our thing now. That's your Eddie. Um, well, yeah, I mean, Iron Maiden have got Eddie, we've got the judge, um, Blitzkrieg's got the burn of Armageddon. I think it's important to have an identity. But Absolutely. More than that, we have a brand on every album, um, apart from, apart from that, you know, yeah. these two, I don't know why it didn't happen, but we've always got this, this this frame around it, this those, if you put all of the albums on a wall, it would be like a, like a, um, I don't know, like a, an art mm -hmm. gallery. How many songs from that album do you still do live? Oh, um, all of them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, what Sean's just said. Yeah, um, at uh, the festival uh, last week, uh, we played the entire album because they asked us to, mm -hmm. um, and we, we still do that from time to time. But generally, I think we would do probably three. I think three songs from the album. Um, we're in a privileged position now because, you know, back in the day we only had one album. Um, now we've got several, so we can, you know, we can choose from, uh, from from one of the albums. How did things go from the first album to the second? A lot of changes I see, not only musically but personally. Uh, well, yeah. You are no longer a singer. Right? I was no longer the singer. Yep. Uh, this album, um, 
and uh, well, th th this particular CD um, has Into the Future and <coughs> Suspended Sentence. Mm -hmm. But even when we were recording um, Caught in the Act, we were talking about what the title of the next album would be, and we'd already decided on Suspended Sentence mm -hmm. even back then. Um, because that was the start of um, the, co the court references and, uh, you know, to go with the judge and everything. Sure. Um, I mean, this, this particular album, um, I love um, Keep You Oblivion. I, I, that, that song is just so good. Mm -hmm. um, it's, you know, sometimes when you, you sort of um, look at a, a different band, you might, I don't know, it might be Led Zeppelin, it might be Deep Purple, it might be whoever. And you, you think to yourself, I wish I'd done that song. Key to Oblivion is that one of those songs for me. Mm -hmm. um, and so when we when we did the new album, I got the chance to do that song for the um, um, for the bonus tracks. And uh, and so you know that's great. And Ice Map as well. That, that is a, a great song. I'd love to do that too. And how was that you were no longer involved with the band? I mean, you're obviously very well, passionate about mm -hmm. what the music was in the band. We, and we were. Um, and you know, it was, it was primarily because um, in England, um, Kerrang! magazine absolutely crucified Caught in the Act. They mm -hmm. didn't like it one iota, didn't like it at all. Um, and uh, Archok magazine in, in Holland pr did pretty much did the same thing. Um, they crucified the album for the choice of music that we had on it. They, cru they crucified us for the name. Um, you know, you've, you've already spoken about the problems that we faced mm -hmm. with that. Names, and yeah. you know, we came to a point where decisions had to be made. And um, I think that it's true to say that the guys um, wanted to change the name. I didn't. I wanted to stick it out. I, I just said, look, I want. It, I think we should stay with this. It's a good. It's a great name. Personally, I think Satan is the best name for a heavy metal band there is. Blitzkrieg's the second best name. <laughs> I'm fortunate to be in both. In both. But, you know, and it's not a bias, that is my honest opinion. Um, and I, I really wanted to stay with the name Satan, um, and I wanted to continue, you know, and do the next album to follow on from Court in the Act. We all had different ideas on that, so we agreed to go our separate ways. It was, it mm -hmm. was really that simple. But there was no massive bust-ups, there was no, you know, uh, fights or name-calling or hates, you know. Oh, that's why you're able to do it now again. Of course. I mean, we, we parted company as friends, the best of friends, and we throughout the years that we were apart doing separate things, we remained friends. Um, and several times in that time, we talked about getting back together again at some point. Mm -hmm. um, it wasn't all, you know, it was kind of hard getting all five of us together at one point, um, until we actually managed to do it. And what sparked that? Well, you know, it, it was something that I, uh, you know, uh, Sean used to come through to my house quite regularly, and mm -hmm. we would talk about um, a Satan reunion um, a lot. And um, basically, what happened? I was I was over in Germany at Keep a True Festival, um, and Oliver, the guy that runs the festival, said, "I really want Satan to play." And I said, "Look, you know, Satan don't exist. We don't exist anymore." And he said, "Look." I want Satan to play, and he wasn't going to be put off. And we kind of, you know, I think he got in, he got in touch with Steve as well. Um, and I think we, the, the the time came. I, I don't know who it was. I think, I think, the message came to me via Sean. Can we get together? And we met in a pub in Newcastle, down on the quayside, um, for a drink. It had to be um, in Newcastle. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, well, the rest of the, most of the guys live in Newcastle. I don't, but you know, I travelled in, so we were all together. Um, and you know, I remember that meeting extremely well. We talked about, look, you know, it's been a long time. Can we do this? And, and, and I think we all agreed that we can do it. We could do it, and we all wanted to do it. And that is the important thing. We all wanted to do it, and it's, it's um, the transition became very, very easy. And I remember um, going to the rehearsal room that uh, Skyclad used, uh, courtesy of Steve. Mm -hmm. uh, he, he said, look, let's get together, and we did. And you know, the, re the thing that kind of struck us was that it had been 28 years that we'd been apart. But in that room, it, it just felt like yesterday. Outstanding. You know? And it, we, when you put the five of us together, there is a chemistry. 
Um, and at that time, um, Sean had a problem with his ankle, so we had to get a, a dep in. So we used Blitzkrieg's drummer at the time um, to fill in for this one gig that we had agreed to play. Um, and I think, you know, we kind of, I think we all kind of agreed that we would do this gig and if people still wanted it, if people still wanted the band um, and we still had something relevant to say, musically, that we would take it further. And, um, and you we did. did. And we did. So yeah. let's show the reunion album. The reunion album is this one here. Okay. How did it come about? Well, again, uh, you know, as I've just said, it was that. And, and once we'd made the decision to carry on, we all said that, you know, we, we, we all agreed that what we should do is not write an album that was like 28 years away from this one. We agreed that what we should try and do, if we could, is write the album that should have followed. So it's on. a natural follow up, and that's yeah. what it feels like. And, you know, and, uh, you know I, I think I know that, that personally, for months, I, I drove around every time I got in my car, caught in the act was in my stereo constantly, and I listened to it constantly so that I could get my head into where I was when we wrote this album. And I think the rest of the guys kind of did a very similar thing. And so when we started writing, we didn't copy it. I think that's very important that that is pointed out. It, we did not do a copy of this album. We did the album that should have followed it. Um, and we were able to do that because we, get, we got our heads into the the place where we were when we wrote that album, so it felt right. And up until the album was released to the fans, which are the most important part of the story, um, we really didn't know how it was going to be accepted. And all of the fans seemed to love it, and they said, "Oh, this is the perfect. This is the, this is the album that should have happened in 1984." And you know, so really, we we, we breathed a sigh of relief that we'd actually achieved what we set out to do. Um, and you know, that, that is exactly what we wanted to do. We wanted to do the album that followed on from Caught in the Act. And, uh, and then and more it. albums followed. Go ahead and tell yeah. the story. Atom by Atom was, was an album that um, we kind of thought, okay, we've done the follow-up album now. Let's try and sort of, you know, go forward in time a little to what would we have done next? Not a follow-up sort of like, it, we didn't feel that it was important anymore to try and do the 1985-1986 album. I think it was just important to do another album. And this one was kind of experimental in a way, to try and push the barriers a little. Um, different to what had gone before, but at the same time had the same flavour of. And uh, so we went with that. Um, and we wrote, uh, um, we wrote songs for this album with that, with that kind of mindset, mm -hmm. um, which was slightly different to what we've done before, um, different formats and, and so on, but with still <laughs> the shape and feel to it. The judge is still there, the logo is still mm -hmm. there, the one if you look in the mirror it's identical whichever way you look at it. Um, and all of these things are important to us, you know. Mm -hmm. um, and I said before, what, what the fans feel is very important to us, and it was, it was obvious that the fans wanted more. When we did this, you know, so we had that in mind when we wrote this album. Mm -hmm. So we went ahead and we did that. Um, and um, Atom by Atom was, was the first time <laughs> that we hadn't used a title that was to do with courtrooms. Now uh, we wanted to move away from that slightly because uh, it, it kind of eventually you're going to run out of cliches for sure. a courtroom situation. Yeah. So we thought, okay, we, we, we retain the, which we retain the, um, the judge um, who's always there. And we retain the the frame, which keeps it, it keeps the thing going. It's it, it's um, it, it's a progression um, as what it is, and it, it, you know, um, it was well received. And I I I, now, I personally like that. Album. Not only that, you brought Satan music to the United States, which yes. was next to impossible back in the yeah. old days. Oh, yeah. How I mean, did that happen? Well, it it kind of it, it seems like a. It seems like a blur now when you look back on it, but we got a we got a message from um, the uh, whiskey a gogo, um, and you know 
you, you don't get a gig at Whiskey and Gold Road, not unless you're invited. Um, and we were fortunately invited, you know. And at first we thought, is this real? You know, we have been invited to play the Whiskey and Gold Road. Everybody wants to play the Whiskey and Gold Road. Everybody's played the Whiskey and Gold Road, anybody that's anybody. True. Sure. Um, and, you know, you, you can go to the Whiskey and Gold Road and you can play there. And you, you, people walk in. Um, and, um, it's you know, it could be Alice Cooper, it could be Slash, it could then it could have been Lemmy, it could have been whoever. You know. So we, we kind of built a tour around that um, and, uh, and went for it. it it's, and we've had, you know, the States has been very good to us, really. Mm -hmm. um, and every time we've come back, there's been more and more people there. We, we're, we're slowly building it up. And it's, um, it's a nice place to be, I, I think. Continentally, you follow that with a live record, right? The live record, yeah. yeah. I mean, that that was um, where is it? Um, oh, there. Um, I don't know where it is. Yeah, there it is. Uh, live in the art. Mm -hmm. um, you know, this uh, this was this was something, I guess, that uh, you know had to be done I think, at some point. We recorded um, six dates mm -hmm. in six days. Um, and it, it, it was just one of those things that was, it was so easy to do because all we did was just tap into the desk and we brought a, a mobile studio with us. Yeah. Um, in the days of mobile studios when, uh, you know, when Deep Purple did the famous uh, <laughs> album on, on the shores of Lake Geneva. That's right. It was, it was, it was in a truck. That's right. Um, our Only. mobile recorder was, was only in, in a box, you know, it's technology how it's moved on but we recorded the all of the shows we recorded every show and then chose the um the best songs from it mm -hmm. um and it kind of worked out we had a, i think roughly about two songs from every show um and um we put it out there people had asked for for a live album for a while mm -hmm. so we thought okay um we'll do that we did it and i'm really glad that we did because it's kind of a snapshot of a moment in time some people some people don't like live albums um, because they think, oh, it, 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 it's kind of a glorified best of album, if you like. I, 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 I don't, I'm not a fan of best of albums. Really. Same here. I, um, if I, I like think, a record, um, then I need to have all yeah, of it. I think, Go I to think bed. a best of album can be useful if you're not really a fan of something. Yeah. Like, I don't know. Um, for instance, Elvis Presley. Yeah. I am not, I'm not an Elvis Presley fan. But he did do some decent songs, so a, a, a best of album of Elvis Presley for me would be perfect. Because I don't want all 40 whatever it is of his albums, you know. But if you're a fan, you've already got the songs, so why would you want right. to buy a compilation album with me? So, but, so the, the, the live album gives you the opportunity to do that, to give a snapshot of the best songs, but a slightly different version. So it gives you that, and it, 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 that's good. And now the new album. The new one, the yeah. new one, Cruel Magic. It's um, again, it's not as it's not as experimental as Atom by Atom. It's it's kind of, and it's at the same time, it's not a return back to Caught in the Act either. It's somewhere in between. And um, some people think that it's our best album. Um, I'm I don't know. I mean, um, personally, I, I think that that every album that you make has to be at least as good as the one before it, otherwise there's no point. So I, I would say from that angle, yes, it is our best album, probably, you know. And I think uh, that's cool, but really from my angle, I think it, it doesn't matter whether it's the best album or not. The point, the point is, point A, do the fans like it? Point B, did they go out and buy it? Point C, which album do they like the best? And that to me is the order of, of importance. It's important that they like it enough to go and buy it, of course. And then once they've got it, they can make a personal choice. Oh, I like this, I like that better or whatever. <coughs> Excuse me. But, you know, from a, from a point of view of a musician, um, as long as the fans like it, that's, that is the important thing. Um, a personal choice of which one's the better album, that is a personal choice. Mm -hmm. it, it, 
early on in this interview we spoke about the controversy with name Satan. Yeah. Um, so what is it that you battling in your lyrics? What is that you're singing about? Well, because that will make yeah. most sense. It, it, well, this is the whole point. Uh, and a lot of people didn't get it at first. Um, and you know, um, the word Satan conjures up in your head the horned one. And there is not one song on any of our albums about Satan, the man. Um, he's mentioned in Alone in the Dock, Satan laughing creeps inside. That's it. I don't think he's mentioned anywhere else. He may be, I could be wrong. And I'm sure there's die-hard fans out there that would be able to correct me on that. But the point is, if Satan, the name, is the embodiment of evil, we all accept that, I believe, then, as a band, what we write about is what we consider to be the evils that happen on this planet. So therefore, if, that is, if Satan is the embodiment of evil, transferring that to the evil that, you know, like Iron Maiden said, the evil that men do go sure. on and on. And this is, this is what this is all about. The injustices that happen in the world, the evil things that man does to his fellow man, the evil that man does to the other animals that inhabit this planet. We behave in such an in, in, a, in, a, in an awful way um, as human beings. Sometimes I, I, I doubt whether we actually uh, really live up to that title because the work that, should we not be, because we are the higher intelligence, should we not also be the, 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 per, the people that look after this planet rather than trying to destroy it? That is what Satan is about. Thank you. You're welcome.